Okay, so let's try to recap what we just saw. If we have a polynomial that has its highest degree being even, then we know the general shape of it is going to be something sort of like this, and then it's going to wiggle something sort of in between. If it were a negative coefficient in front, its general shape would be this. It would sort of come up here, wiggle a little bit, and go down. If you have an odd highest degree polynomial that you're graphing, then basically what it's going to look like is something like uh, this. Let's see, how would it look to you? It would look like this. So it would sort of do this kind of thing, wiggle a little bit potentially in here, and then end up down, unless it was a negative coefficient in front, in which case it would sort of be the opposite and look like this kind of thing. Now, the very basic, the most simplest even degrees, of course, the first one is the parabola. And that one just looks like this. So this is y equals x squared. Now, what would, what would um, y equals x to the fourth look like? Well, it would be sort of a similar kind of thing. It would come down and go up. But actually, what turns out is it sort of gets a little bit, starts in a little bit further and then drops. Still very smooth, but it's a slightly different shape. OK, that's x to the fourth. x to the sixth would actually even have a more dramatic thing. It would sort of start a little further in, come down. Go down a little sharper, but come up. Still smooth, though. Don't, no corners. Always very smooth and symmetric. But you can see what's happening. It's sort of converging to something that sort of looks very sharp like this. The higher the degree, the more it looks like that if it's even. By the way, you notice that they all contain the same point. And if you think about it and check, that point is actually 1, 1, and minus 1, 1. Because if you put 1 into x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, you always get 1. And if you plug in minus 1, into x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, you always get one again. So in fact, those two points, of course, they should look even. They should be able to be like even looking. Those two points are points in common with all these things. But the higher the degree, sort of the more you like, the more you like the thing is going to be. What about if you have an odd degree? Well, the most classic odd one would be the cubic. I guess actually the most classic odd one would be linear, just the line. No, oh, yeah, OK, let's draw that in. Right, that's odd, right? That's just x to the first power. Then the cubic is more interesting. It has that little wiggle. So there's x cubed. Now, what's x to the fifth look like? Well, it's the same kind of thing as it's going on here. It's going to be the same basic shape, but just sort of sharper. So it's going to start a little taller up and then come down faster. Go over and then do that. So that's going to be x to the fifth. And what you can see we're heading toward is something that sort of looks very, very sharp, comes down, and comes down like this. And the higher the degree, the more tight, the tighter it gets sort of around those corners. Always very smooth, though, never sharp. Because it's a polynomial, it's always extremely smooth. But it has that basic shape, and you can see these things. Again, you notice that all the points have in common these two. What are those? Well, at 1, it's 1. Because if you take um, 1 to the first, or 1 cubed, or 1 to the fifth, or 1 to the seventh, you always get 1. And notice. But if you plug in minus 1, minus 1 to the first, minus 1 cubed, or minus 1 to the fifth, you always get negative 1. So in fact, those points are always points in common with the very, very basic cubic, just as we have the same points, similar points anyway, with the even power things. Now, just knowing what these basic, basic shapes look like, you can start to graph all sorts of stuff. Let's do some simple examples just to illustrate the point. So uh, let's graph f of x equals 2x to the fourth. OK, well, I know it's going to sort of be a, a sitting up kind of cup. And the, the 2 in front, if you remember, sort of brings things in, makes things tighter. So it should look something like that. So it should have sort of a, a, a parabola-looking, parabola-esque kind of thing. And we can plot some points really fast here. Plug in 0, we get 0. Plug in 1, and we get um, 2. So you can see it climbs really fast. Minus 1, it's going to be also 2. Because remember, this is an even function. It's going to be symmetric against the, the y-axis. If you were to plug in 2, I go way off the screen, right? So I, I climb really, really fast. Real fast climber. This function's going places. This function is on the social circuit. So it looks something like that. That would be a graph of it. OK, let's try another one. How about 1 third? f of x equals 1 third x to the sixth. Well, x to the sixth still has that sort of general parabola-esque thing, but it's even you know, sort of slightly sharper. Even though it's curvy, it's more dramatic. 
straighter here, sharper turn to get to the origin, sort of straighter down here, and then a sharp go up like that, even more sharper than this, but I'm taking a third of it. So that means that, remember what a, what a, what a third does, a coefficient that's less than one tends to stretch things out a little bit. So even though I'm starting off sort of very tight, I'm going to sort of loosen it up a little bit. So I should expect that kind of activity. Again, plotting a couple points, not a bad idea. Let's see, if we um, put in zero, we get zero. That's pretty easy. If I plug in a one, look what happens. I get just a third. So there I don't climb too much at all. I just climb right to here. So you can really see, and same thing with minus one. It's an even function again. So my, my growth is going to be very gradual. At two, what am I going to have? Well, I'm going to have two to the sixth. So that's a pretty big number. That's around like uh, 30. Is that, uh, gee, I always forget these things. Oh, I don't even have my calculator here. Oh, gosh, oh, my God. I'm, I feel naked. I feel naked because my I left a calculator in the other room. You see, that's the problem. Um, let's see. So it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. No calculators are needed. So let's see. This is going to be uh, 8 and 8. So that's 64. OK. So 64, but then I take a third of it. So that's going to be around 20-something. So by 2, I'm already starting to grow pretty fast. So, so it looks something like this. Again, it has a general parabolic feel, but at 2, I'm at 64 over 3. So you could actually mark that down and say not drawn to scale. That's similarly at minus 2. Anyway, you get the sense of how these things would bend and curve. And as notice, as I multiply by the third out there, it flexes out a little teeny bit, but still growing quite dramatically, still growing quite dramatically. Let's try this one. f of x equals minus x minus 1 cubed. OK, how would we tackle something like this? Well, the first thing I notice, I'm going to do some intermediate steps. In fact, maybe you want to do this kind of thing in pencil or something, or just do it on the side. But the first thing I notice is, basically, this is just sort of um, something cubed, something cubed. Now, there's a negative sign in front, which means it's not going to be this kind of cube. Now, watch this. This is just x cubed. That's x cubed right there. But it's going to be negative that. So that's a flip over the x-axis. So it's going to look like this. So if I draw that in, in fact, I'll draw it in just in dotted. This is just minus x cubed. What I want is that thing, but I want x minus 1, the part cubed. So what does that mean? That's a shift in the x, which means I'm going to be shifting left or right. Now, which way do I go? Well, it's tempting to say, well, x minus something, I'll shift to the left. But remember, that's a classic mistake. In fact, it's classic mistake number 8. Number 8, it's the shifting function mistake. And remember, add to y, go high. Add to x, go west. So if you add a number, you should go to the west. Since I'm subtracting, I should go to the east by one unit. So I should just take this picture and literally, rigidly, just shift it over 1. And so the actual picture would look like this. Exact same picture, but just shift it over 1. And that's the function f of x. So there you get a very accurate picture of it by first plotting this other thing, and then just doing a shift. Just doing a shift. One last one. How about this? f of x equals x plus 2 to the fourth minus 1. What would I do here? Well, I would do a whole bunch of intermediate steps, maybe, before I actually report the news. Here my axes. So the first thing I'll do is just say, OK, what's x to the fourth? That's sort of the, the key thing here, x to the fourth. Well, that's sort of like a parabola thing, but a little bit more exaggerated, a little more dramatic. It's a dramatic parabola. Again, you can plot points if you don't like thinking about drama. But it's a dramatic parabola. Oops. Very symmetric. That is just x to the fourth, not what I want. OK, then what? Well, then what's x plus 2 all to the fourth? That's a shift in the x. And which way? Remember, add to x, go west. So in fact, I'm going to shift it two units this way. So if I shift this whole picture two units this way, 1, 2, it would look something like this. Same picture, just shifted. So that's x plus 2 to the fourth. 
Now I'm ready for the final picture, because then what I do is take everything and subtract 1. So that's now I just take every y value and I deduct 1 from it. So that's going to be a shift down. So I'm going to go down on this one. Get down. Get down. One unit. So you get down by one unit, and then we get the final picture. This picture shifted down by 1, and it looks like this. Uh, let me do this really carefully now. Uh, let's see. I can actually put in my intercepts if I can really, really quickly here. So when x equals 0, this thing is going to be 2 to the 4th minus 1, so some big positive number. So let me just make sure I do that. So it's literally this picture right here shifted down one unit, just one unit down. So this point right here has a height of minus 1. So again, you can see that all I just, the way I graph something like this, it looks pretty complicated, is just to see the essence of it, graph the essence, and then start booting my way up. This is a change in x, two units to the left, so chunk, chunk, and then this brings me down one, chunk. So it's just an easy picture that we've already seen, chunk, chunk. That's all there is to it. Try some of these yourself.